Hi there, welcome back to Go on the Run. So today we're going to be looking at decoding comma separated value files. So in our previous example, uh, let's just open up our code editor. In our previous example, we were looking at how to encode data to comma separated value files and we were able to create a file like this. And so here we have an email and we should change this. It should say Mary Jane, for example. All right, so this is the result of our encoding to JSON using the encoding that CSV package. All right, so now if we remember from our previous example, in CSV, a record is just a slice of string. That's what you give to the encoder. Similarly, when you read back from this comma separated value package, if we go here and look at the documentation for reading, we'll see that we have, we can create a new reader. And then when we do a read, we get back a record, which is a slice of string and the error message. Or we could do read all to get back a slice of slice of string and an error message. I wouldn't recommend doing read all only because if you have to read from a comma separated value file and it's very big, then you're going to end up with a lot of records and that can put memory pressure on your application. I would say read one record at a time. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We create a new reader and then we read. So let's just do it. And since we've covered O2 in code to XML, JSON, and CSV, in this example, we're simply going to read back our comma separated value and write that to screen. So we're not going to encode to anything. So let's get a directory going for CSV decoding. And of course, we need a main that go file. So now let's get around to decoding our file. So this is the file we want to decode from. So let's do it. So now we are opening our file and if there's an error, we fatal exit. If not, we're going to close it, defer close. So to ensure that we're opening the correct file, let's just dump whatever is in this file to the screen as a test. So this proves that we can open the file, we're opening the correct file. But these are just slices. What we really want to do is turn these into some type, which we have already defined like our user type here. And the reason why we wanted to do that is because if we have a large application, we can have a user type that we pass around the application to different functions and so on to work off of a common type, a normalized type, instead of some places we have to use a type, some places we have to use a slice of string. And then I don't have to worry if my input changes to JSON or XML, I can certainly consume all those different formats normalize it into a user type and then use the user type to for the rest of my application. So let's do that. So let's remind ourselves again that once we have a new reader, we can just call read and get a slice of string and, and we check for error. Now, it's important that you read the documentation for any sort of io.reader or io.writer, especially io.reader, because some io readers, when they get to the end of the file, they might actually return some data and end the file and some return nil and then end of file. And if you read the documentation here, you'll see that this particular IO reader, when it returns nil, it returns end of file. There's no data that's actually returned with it. But some IO reader, keep this in mind, sometimes they return end of file and some data, which is the last bit of data. So when you check for end of IO that end of file, you also might want to have to process the last bit of data, else you're going to have an error. Here, if we get a nil, as our error, we know that all this data. If we get IO end of file, we know that there's no data and anything else, there's an error. So we can handle those three situations. So here we're taking, reading each record, each and each record, and we're doing it in a for loop that has no condition. So we're going to read each record, but we need some way of exiting this for loop. If there's nil, error is nil, this means that oh, there's no problem. So we're going to process that record. If we get an IO end of file, 
then we know that we've reached the end of the file no more record so we can break out of this for loop and if it's not nil or it's not in the file then it's some other sort of error about the record itself where we're not at the end of the file but we don't want to continue we're not going to handle that case right now maybe there's not enough fields or something um, some other encoding error in the data in that case we'll just fatal exit our application so we, all we left now to do is to write our process method and with this we can see that our, we are processing all the records in our file and we're printing it out but notice also we're processing the error so again like what we said is we want to do is read these this data and normalize it to our user database so our user type so how can, might we do that so what we can do is imagine attaching to our method to our user type that says i want to populate it with data from a slice of string so Here, we're ensuring that if we are call or from CVS method is called on a nil user object, that we don't try to populate and have a runtime panic. Here, we're guarding against that if we were given a nil slice, we don't try to also access data from it. So now we've populated our user object with the corresponding field from a slice. So let's test that. We can see in the output that we are printing out the first name and last name, but notice something strange here. Our header is getting into being encoded into user type. And that's not exactly what we want. And the reason for that is because remember, with comma separated value, it just reads every record is a slice of string. So we want to read that first record from the file and treat it as an header. So we should definitely, after we create a reader, we should read the first line if we know our input has a first record and that's going to be up to you and whoever you're exchanging data with to make that agreement. Now that we have our header slice, let's assume that we have no error, but you should check when you're doing this in production code, but here I'm not going to do it. Because um, we know this file has an error, we didn't have any problem reading it just now, so I'm not going to check. In this case, since we're reading this exact same type of file, we probably don't even need to worry about the error. We could have just decided to read and throw away the error in our main application here by simply saying, you know, I'm going to do a read, throw away the first error, and all is well, and everything seems to work fine. So one of the problems I had decoding is that the standard package did not work on all of the input comma separated value files I had. So they were having issues decoding it. So I had to go and look for another package for decoding comma separated value files. So if you encounter an issue, do that by looking here. So that's it. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video.